Boom! What's up, Familia? Dayspring here with an episode of Power of X-Men. And my gosh, Familia, it is such a depressing time to be a Marvel stan. Or it's just a depressing time in general in the world, right? I just, I can't believe how much negativity is out there. I, last night, I had the, I finally had a night off. And I wanted to stay in and sort of brainstorm videos I wanted to make because, you know, news has been a little scarce lately. I mean, you know, we, we have everything going on with Deadpool, of course, but Ryan Reynolds has asked that no one reports, you know, on, on any leaks that are happening on set. So I wanted to be very respectful not to address any Deadpool news going forward, not addressing any Deadpool news going forward. And I was like, okay, well, I can go through some kind of covers. You know, I don't think the weekly Xbooks are particularly well, but maybe I can do a catch up on it. And then I saw that Ryan Ting had posted uh, an image about a live stream that's happening on the 14th, so in two days, and it was all Wolverine stuff. And I was like, ooh, the display model behavior list is accurate ish. We'll see if it's accurate, but it is Wolverine focused. And I was like, okay, so I'll wake up tomorrow morning and I'm going to do a video on Ryan Ting's, you know, post talking about Wolverine, reiterating the rumors that are out there and maybe speculate on like a few surprises we could get, right? And then I got a couple links sent to me on, on the Power of X-Men DMs from various news sources about Hasbro and its layoffs. And I was like, can we not have anything nice? And then, of course, I go to YouTube and I, I'm kind of like, all right, you know, obviously we'll address that tomorrow. Let me just turn my brain off. I want to go to bed. And I go to YouTube and I see various YouTubers commenting on this. And I was like, okay, let me just, where's the conversation at? And one of them was a very mean video about being like, you know, Marvel's pushing this agenda. No one wants Ironheart figures. <laughs> And I was like, oh my god, this is just collecting Marvel Legends. We don't have to get hyper-political about anything. And, you know, it's kind of like a vibe I've been feeling lately, especially on the Power of X-Men Instagram page, where once upon a time, I used to say, oh, I'm so proud of our page, because we really don't get any hate, no hateful comments, uh, you know, actually appear here. And, and if it does, they're just like spam bots from the internet. But I got to tell you, as the Instagram page and community has grown, I can't post anything anything without getting some kind of angry snide remark and it's it, it, it's a tough time out there i posted an x-men evolution episode on angel's wings screen cap of kitty celebrating hanukkah with a comparison shot of her celebrating hanukkah in the comics you know i love doing those comparison shots and there were like one or two comments there that i'm not going to repeat on on here but i was like this needs to get deleted i mean you can't even say happy hanukkah to those who celebrate similarly if you post something that's not 100 percent accurate to the character people lose their minds so i i just wanted to do a fun marvel legends video today however we are gonna need to discuss everything that's going on with Hasbro. So I, I want to be very clear. I love Hasbro. The Hasbro team has been nothing but wonderful to Power of X-Men. Ryan Ting was one of the first interviews we ever had here on the channel. We always cite it when we do Marvel Legends focus episodes because it was that epic and it left that big of an impression for us. I've seen them at conventions. Dwight, Dan have all been wonderful and I'm asked like, hey, can we do some content? Here's my phone. Like they have been nothing but awesome about it. I was with Lenore Zan recently at LA Comic Con and she was signing a Marvel Legends Rogue, the retro card target one. And I was like, oh my God, we need to get Ryan Ting a video of this because he loves you so much. He loves Rogue and Gambit. And so she did the voice of Rogue as she was signing it. I sent it to Ryan and he was so, he's like, oh, thank you so much. This made my day. So I want to be very clear that getting this kind of news about Hasbro having layoffs is really upsetting. I think we, we, we can dive into all of it because I, I have some experience too with corporate layoffs and 
Hasbro has had a lot of ups and downs as a company. It's just really upsetting because I think this is a, in, in terms of Marvel Legends history, this does feel like we have been living through a golden age. I don't know how much Marvel Legends is affected by this, but we're going to dive into it. We're going to divide this video into two parts. And the first part is going to be all about the stream on the 14th, which looks to be very Wolverine heavy. And we're just going to have fun speculating on what figures we could possibly see on that live stream. And the second part, we'll tackle the news on everything that's going on with Hasbro and their layoffs and just sort of weigh in as someone who is just on the outside, does not have any inside tea, just has been through rounds of corporate layoffs. Let's read the articles that are out there, some of the comments that the staff has made, and we'll sort of take it from there. Before we begin this episode, I want to give a special shout out to Huff, who has sent me a lot of great swag from X-Men to Spider-Man 2099. I love this shirt so much. I have been rereading Spider-Man 2099 and Huff. They're just totally awesome. And they have sent us lots of swag over the last few months. So cheers to Huff. All right, so let's just have some fun now talking about the Hasbro live stream that's going to be happening on the 14th at 11 a.m. You'll recall that in a previous episode of Power of X-Men, we broke down a rumored list that display model behavior had said that he kind of got a hold of because he knows a guy who knows a guy in one of the factories um, that Marvel Legends, where Marvel Legends are born. So it predominantly centered on Wolverine's 50th anniversary and various two packs that we're going to be getting. And so we broke down the list and now Ryan Ting has taken to his Insta story saying that he's getting ready for the 14th and just putting some stuff together and it's all Wolverine legends. So I think it's safe to say that we're going to be tackling Wolverine on a Thursday's live stream, which I think is great because in the previous live streams, we haven't really had a lot of the X-Men focus. And, you know, it's been kind of a quiet year for X-Men legends. So I'm really excited to see some. But what are some of the figures that we're going to be seeing in this? Well, Lalandra has already been revealed. She was revealed at that Italian Comic Con. So I think it's safe to say that we're going to see that Lalandra is going to be paired up with a Wolverine. Which Wolverine? I think we've speculated that it's going to be the Lumberjack Canadian Wolverine. So that, you know, that look, the civilian look he has from the animated series. Another one is going to be Armored Psylocke which Wolverine was responsible for making that armor for her. So shout out to Pedro, a.k.a. the mini toy box collector, for reminding me of that little innocuous fact that we, we, I, well, I'm saying we, I have personally forgotten. So we have Lalandra, an armored Psylocke, and a Sabretooth as well, Jim Lee-style Sabretooth. Those are some pretty good figures, I got to tell you. I mean, Lalandra and Armored Psylocke alone are going to make us all like really excited. But could there be another figure that's going to be revealed? I, I really do hope so. I think we talked about this in a previous episode where if you're going to be celebrating 50 years of Wolverine, you really want to make sure you're going to get those characters that are really tied to him personally. Now, I would love to see a Silver Fox personally, but you know, I, I'm thinking of what is going to appeal most to the mass market. And I got to tell you, if you do a Mark Silvestri Inferno style Wolverine with, let's say, a Goblin Queen or an X-Factor Jean, I think you will break the internet. I truly think you would break the internet if you just give that Mark Silvestri like the cow and the shadowy face with a X-Factor Jean in her yellow and red outfit. That would be perfect. If you give us an Inferno-style Madeline, I don't think we're going to get an Inferno-style Madeline. I think if we're going to get a Marvel Legends Madeline prior, it's going to be X-Men 97. That's the only way I see us getting Madeline because the costume, unfortunately, Familia, it is what it is. The costume is too contentious from the comics, so they're going to have to do either the modern version, which modern version doesn't look that bad in my opinion, the one that we're seeing right now in Dark X-Men, and dark web that that kind of costume it's fine it does 
It does what it needs to do, but I don't like it. What we've seen from the pop X Men ninety seven pop, I think if you adapt that costume, is that if that's a costume that we are going to get of her in X Men ninety seven, I'm happy with just with just that costume, you know. But don't do don't. I don't want the modern costume. I don't think the modern costume looks particularly well. Mm. But I would love to see a Gene. 90s X Factor Gene, which is a want so many of us have, as well as Madeline Pryor. I chef's kiss if they're able to pull that off. I would also like to see Wolverine and his sidekicks. I think give us a Shadow Cat figure, right? I know we've had a plenty of kitties there, but with them training together, oh, that would look absolutely wonderful. Or if you want to pull a fast one on us, you could have Wolverine and Shadow Cat with a K, <laughs> you know, from Fall of X. That's fine. I'll happily take that because, you know, I love Shadow Cat with a K so much, but I would absolutely love if we were able to get that. I think X-23, Laura, and Wolverine, I think that would be great with a Honey Badger and a Dakin, Dakin, however you pronounce that, I say Dakin. I would love that 100%, especially since we haven't had a Dakin figure since Return of Marvel Legends Wave 2. So it's been a minute since we've gotten one of those figures. I don't know how it works on the back end, but I would also, to save money and maybe maximize molds, I would do an animated series Wolverine and Jubilee. Since those have already been done, just pair them together and send them out to mass retailers. I think that would do really well, especially since I'm assuming the X-Men 97 figures did very well because people were going crazy for them. But I don't know after that article. But I, I th that's sort of what I would do. I would focus on Wolverine and the love interest. So Gene and Silver Fox, I would focus on Wolverine and the sidekicks as well. And I would focus in on Wolverine having relationships with, you know, armored Psylocke and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I would be very happy with Lalandra and armored Psylocke, but I hope they do throw us a couple of curveballs. In terms of Wolverines, I want to see, well, I already mentioned the Mark Silvestri Inferno with the shadowy face Wolverine. I think that would be a wonderful figure to put out there. And you know where I'm going to go with this, Familia. If you engage with this channel or community, my favorite version of Wolverine is Feral Wolverine from the mid-90s. That is a Wolverine I want post Fatal Attractions, where Magneto had ripped out the adamantium from his body, and he becomes more feral style. That is the number one Wolverine I want. I am shocked that given how many Wolverine figures we have gotten from Hasbro, that we haven't gotten that figure yet. And you can give us an alternate head with the bandana, which is blue, and without the bandana. <laughs> Again, if you engage with this channel, you know Flink and I had a very long debate on Barrel Wolverine's bandana color because a prototype from Toy Biz back in the day when they did the Onslaught Wave had it as red, but that was inaccurate. And it's actually blue. It was blue in the comics and it was blue in the final version of the figure that went out there. Although we did find one panel, I believe, where the bandana was red. I mean, we, we searched the internet very hard for there. So that's what I sort of want to see out of Thursday's live stream. Now, are we going to see something more perhaps than just Wolverines? I would love uh, Wolverines and two packs with Wolverines. I think it's possible we could get a Deadpool 3 wave announcement given how much hype there is for Deadpool and how much lead time there seems to be in the media. I will say I, I wouldn't hold my breath on Deadpool 3 just yet. I would imagine maybe in spring we will see that. It just depends. You know, we, we, we are only just getting the Spider-Man No Way Home figures of Toby and Andrew. So, you know, they definitely need some lead time to get the actors in there, scan them. I, I don't know if they still do that. Uh, Grandpa Dayspring, back in the day, they would have to go into the Hasbro office, get scanned, <laughs> you know, to, to make sure they're making the figure accurately. I don't know if they still do that. I truly don't. Um, you know, with all the photo printing, if someone knows, they can leave it down there in the comments. But I, I don't think we're going to see Deadpool 3 news necessarily, but we could get an announcement that maybe they're going to be teasing Deadpool in the future. 
I think in terms of a general X Men wave, it's very possible. Everyone's talking about Rachel Summers. That is sort of you know the the conversation we're all having, and the X Men Marvel Legends sub community, very specific community out there. But for those of us who are X Men legends x-men marvel legends collectors we have been talking nonstop about rachel dan who obviously asked ryan ting about it i was at new york comic con and dwight pointed out the jacket that huff also sent me of rachel summers and he was here like the hound is that a, is that a character people want is that what you want is that what they want it was amazing so i i would hope we would get a tease for rachel and you know at this point, we do have the retro card Dark Phoenix, which is a version of Rachel's, you know, costume in the comics. You know, we just need a Rachel head at this point. But no, I, I I'm being too lenient here. I really want Rachel to, at the Hound. I've said this before. I said this to Dwight. I want a deluxe Rachel figure with lots of Phoenix effects, lots of different heads. And you know what? We can use one of those heads on the retro card Dark Phoenix, and we can get another look for Rachel. So you could just, if they give us alternate heads with Rachel, like a powered up, not powered up version, with the marks, without the marks, um, we can have two Rachel figures Usually. So I hope we get a Rachel figure. I've I've talked about, you know, Krakoa is coming to an end. Familia, it is what it is. Krakoa is coming to an end. Prepare yourselves for that. But I think there are some Krakoan era figures that we still need. And among them are Captain Britain, Doug Ramsey with the Warlock arm, and I want the Warlock sword as well. Rasputin, I hope that we get some of those curveballs there. But I would expect the stream on Thursday to be Wolverine heavy. We're probably going to get confirmation for those two packs that display model behavior. Had already reported on, like I, I guess at this point, six months ago. We already know Lalandra has been revealed and that she was part of that display model behavior speculation list. So she's probably going to be paired with the Wolverine. We are probably going to see Armored Psylocke and we're probably going to see a Saber Tooth. Beyond that... I really do hope that we get a X-Factor gene. I hope we get to see Wolverine and his sidekicks because if we're going to be celebrating 50 years of Wolverine, we got to celebrate his sidekicks as well. All right, Familia, that is our speculation for the stream on Thursday. Now we're going to get into the news of Hasbro and the layoffs. So if you don't want to deal with anything negative or you don't want to see me just read an article and weigh in my thoughts, I, I understand it because I myself am just so upset about getting this news because I really, I enjoy Marvel Legends so much. I have been collecting Marvel Legends since 2002 and I've seen the peaks and valleys with this series and I've seen it with Hasbro as well. A lot of people forget that Marvel Legends went away for a significant while. And it wasn't until the return of Marvel Legends that wave with Hope Summers, aka Baby Spalding and Thor, that we finally let it that it finally led to the renaissance of Marvel Legends that we have today. And the community has grown significantly in the last few years. It feels like everyone is collecting Marvel Legends. It feels like everyone's always talking about Marvel Legends. And that's great for those of us who have been with the line since its inception. This is exactly the future we wanted. And I've been so happy. And I keep thinking like, man, if I'm having a bad day, I just go to Target and I just browse the shelves to see what they have. Even if they have Marvel Legends or not, just the idea of going to Target and seeing these figures, it makes me really happy. But anyways, Familia, let's dive into the news that broke yesterday. All right, so we're going to read the article that was posted on The Times. I did look at other news sources, specifically Reuters. I like getting the headlines from news wires like Reuters, but I thought it was a very involved article, and I, I wanted something a little bit more th that we can digest and talk about. So again, we're going to do it from the Times. I don't have a subscription to the Wall Street Journal, sadly. I should have a Wall Street Journal subscription, but I have a subscription to other places. But you know, sadly, you know, not the Wall Street Journal. All right, so here's the headline. Hasbro to cut 1,100 jobs as weak toy sales persist. The announcement that the toy maker was eliminating nearly 17% of its workforce came during the crucial holiday shopping season. 
Ah! Hasbro, the maker of Magic the Gathering, said a majority of the job cuts would come in the first six months of next year. Oh, that just breaks my heart. I have to tell you, from the Marvel Legends side, I haven't really noticed that there's something wrong with Hasbro or the sales. I mean, certainly, and listen, I, I live in, in, in two very urban cities, so tracking Marvel Legends is hard because of you know location, but I don't really see lots of Marvel Legends being peg warmers anymore. Obviously, I went to Ollie's for the first time ever in my life last month, and You'll recall from me, Leah, that I posted on the Insta stories being like, wow, there's so many Age of Apocalypse Wave 2 Marvel Legends here. I, I don't know. I mean, are those all the returns that just go to Ollie's? When the Age of Apocalypse Waves were kind of coming out, they weren't peg warmers by any means. They were kind of there and gone. So it saddens me to hear that. Hasbro, the toy maker behind popular brands like Peppa Pig. I'm never not going to think of White Lotus after Peppa Pig. Hasbro, the toy maker behind popular brands like Peppa Pig, Transformers, and Magic the Gathering. What? No Marvel Legends? <laughs> What's up, Times? Oh, that's that's curious to me. Is Marvel Legends not big enough to be one of the top three? Uh, I'm nitpicking. Anyways. Said on Monday that it would eliminate roughly 1,100 jobs or nearly 17% of its workforce as the company continued to grapple with weak sales. Hasbro's chief executive, Chris Cox, said in a memo to staff on Monday that the market headwinds we anticipated have proven to be stronger and more persistent than planned. The layoffs announced during the critical holiday shopping season following a reduction of 800 jobs at the company earlier this year. Oh, so that's what? Nearly 2,000 employees that have been cut? Ah! The toy maker said it expected a majority of the latest cuts to take place over the next six months with the remainder over the next year. We anticipate the first three quarters to be challenging, particularly in toys where the market is coming off historic pandemic-driven highs. All right. That's fair. And you know what? I would actually say that during the pandemic, because we were all in lockdown, people started collecting Marvel Legends and probably have weaned off a little bit now that real life has sort of come back. I will say, though, there was a lot of good products being released during the pandemic. So so I think it's a combination of just really good products they had. I mean, think about the X-Force box set, the Excalibur box set, the Nimrod box set. The Krakoan X-Men wave. We were just getting a lot of good stuff. Oh, the Hellfire Club box set as well. We were just getting really good stuff during the pandemic. And we were all at home and we all wanted to collect it and post it on social media. So I don't know if they're talking about Marvel Legends here, though. Maybe in general sweeps. I can only talk about this from a Marvel Legends fan perspective. Mr. Cox said in a memo, while we have made some important progress across our organization, the headwinds we saw through the first nine months of the year have continued into the holiday and are likely to persist into 2024. In its third quarter earnings report, the company had signaled that softer toy sales would dampen its outlook, noting that overall revenue was expected to fall by about 13 to 50% for the year. Shares of the company based in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, fell about 5.7% in after-hours trading. The stock, which closed on Monday at $48.89, was down nearly 19% over the past year. What were the numbers before the pandemic, though? That's what I want to know. Ah! Mr. Cox said the company would continue to explore its options to reduce its real estate footprint and would close its Providence, Rhode Island office after its lease ended in January 2025. I've seen the Providence, Rhode Island office. I, I do lots of gigs in Providence, Rhode Island. And I, I tell you, that sign there on the building, I remember I was driving with my Uber and I was like, Pull over. I need to take a photo of this building. And she was here like, Hasbro, the toy company. I was, I was like, oh, my God, everyone on Instagram is going to love this. And she didn't quite get it. But so I would be curious to see how Hasbro was before the pandemic. Unfortunately, I haven't I wasn't really paying attention, but reduce its real estate footprint. You know, we just live 
in a world post COVID, a lot of people work remotely. I do gigs here in the city. I'm not going to get specific here, but there was one event I was doing and someone made a joke being like, well, you know, office real estate in Manhattan, this is a terrible time for all of us. So it is what it is. You know, companies are, are, are truly reducing their real estate footprint. Even if people are going into the office a couple of days of the week, work remotely has become vastly popular in post COVID. So the fact that they're going to re- they're going to reduce their real estate footprint i mean that's good for them i hope they they need to save money i hope they do save money so i mentioned that i saw a lot of marvel legends at ollie's apparently this is a norm i will say it wasn't the truly popular legends that i saw it was one that i would define as peg warmers age of apocalypse wave 2 as much as i love that wave more than anything i can understand that this almost 30 year old story of course, is going to be a peg warmer because there are not enough new readers out there that know about the Age of Apocalypse. We do have, is it a Kohl's or a Macy's here at the Jersey City Mall? And they had a monopoly of, they had a Falcon and the Winter Soldier Disney Plus series version of Monopoly that was like reduced in price for like $17.99. And I was like, $17.99, $17.99, that's like way too much <laughs> for, for that. Maybe $10.99 or $9.99, I would be like, okay, I'm going to pick up Falcon the Winter Soldier Monopoly. It just seems like a very, I don't know, greedy thing to put out in the market. I mean, who I, I think we all want Falcon the Winter Soldier legends and figures based off of it, but I don't think anyone wanted a Monopoly style of that. Unless it was very cheap to make. That's the only thing I can say. Again, a lot of the stuff that we're reading and speculating, I would be curious to know what's going on on the back end of everything. Because I would imagine. I can only go based off of my experience working in book publishing because I'm now a full-time auctioneer. But with my experience working in book publishing and magazines, I know that when you sit down, you're looking at what is the best thing to put out there in the market that's going to help get you money back. And one of the things that we used to do when I was at HarperCollins is look at our backlist and see which books did you know pretty decent a couple decades ago. And why don't we give them a new cover and ship out like maybe a thousand copies and you know, it no harm, no foul sort of situation with it if it does well or if it doesn't. So I'm, I'm curious if something like Falcon the Winter Soldier Monopoly was that a like, yeah, we know this is not going to be a heavy hitting you know product, but we can put it out there. We have the Monopoly pieces laying around. We just have to slap on you know a skin of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And even if it does poorly, we're still making some good use of the inventory we have around and we're making somewhat of a profit, profit or breaking even. I don't know, it's something we definitely need to talk about. I will say I'm, I'm really curious about the younger market. And this is something that I've tried to talk about with other people When pertaining to comic books, I think the MCU has been really great at inspiring a a new generation of Marvel fans, but they are MCU fans only. I go to the comic book store. I don't see anyone young in there anymore. I, I was like eight years old when I used to go to my local comic book store in town and country down in Miami, and line drive beeper and comics right there before you got into the Everglades. I used to go in to buy the Fleer Ultras, to buy the weekly comics, to see what figures they had. I don't see any young kids at the comic book store at all. And again, maybe it's because I'm just in New York City, maybe because I also am in Miami, but I also have gone to comic book stores all across this country, and I never encounter younger kids there, at least not in the way that it used to be when I was growing up, where you felt the entire comic book store was full of kids your age, and you were desperate to get Superman, you know, Death of Superman comics, what was going on with Jim Lee's X-Men, stuff like that. I just don't see that here. Similarly, with toy hunting and Marvel Legends, I don't see any kids playing with Marvel Legends in the way that we played with the five-inch Toy Biz figures. Now, obviously, Hasbro does other figures that appeal to younger 
and these are the younger markets. But I don't see people running up and, and buying these figures or hunting them in the way that we used to as kids. So I'm curious, just speaking from a Marvel Legends perspective here, is that market still there and how do you capture it? It sounds like Hasbro has larger problems beyond the Marvel Legends licensing. So I don't know. Oh, look at this. Hasbro and McFarland Toys. As we are reporting on this, Hasbro and McFarland Toys have just reached a licensing agreement. Oh, this is getting bigger. And this story is just unfolding. This is much bigger than we thought. All right, let's look this up really quickly. Let's see what's going on here. God, the story is so breaking that no one's reported on it yet. Okay. News link in bio. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to read this from my phone, Familia. McFarland Toys announced an exciting multi-brand licensing agreement with leading toy and game company Hasbro, adding Transformers, Power Rangers, G.I. Joe, and Dungeons and & Dragons to their Page Punchers lineup. Kicking off with Transformers and G.I. Joe products, each Page Puncher will include a full comic and two articulated figures. Page Punchers is an exciting program for us because it gets comic books into people's hands. Oh, what we're just saying right now, that we need to make sure comic books are getting into those younger markets and also other people because a lot, a lot of Wednesday warriors such as myself aren't reading comics in the same vein as they used to. Parents enjoy them because they encourage reading and collectors like them because they provide unique and interesting character stories. With articulated figures plus a full comic book in each page puncher's item, we offer incredible value with this brand, said Todd McFarlane, founder and CEO of McFarlane Toys. From Transformers and G.I. Joe to Power Rangers, Dungeons and & Dragons, and others, I wonder if this is going to include Marvel Legends, a rumor a number of Hasbro brands are known for their rich history and continued storytelling through comics. Page Punchers is a natural extension of these brands, providing the action and adventure our multi-generational fans have come to expect. We can't wait for fans and collectors alike to get their hands on the first product drop coming out in early 2024. Product is expected to launch in early 2024 and will be available at mass market and specialty retailers. You know, we have the McFarlane, Batman, and Robin figures right there. I love them. I think they look great. I mean, fingers crossed on it. So, you know, they, obviously there's a lot of change happening with Asbro. As we speak, <laughs> there, there's news breaking. We had Sam Hatmaker, who w worked at Toy Biz when the Marvel Legends license sort of transitioned to to Hasbro. It's really interesting. It's a really interesting history that Marvel Legends has because obviously we know that Toy Biz bought Marvel and that when Marvel was getting ready to be sold to Disney, Sam Headmaker filled in some of the blanks for us, which was that they got rid of the Toy Biz Marvel Legends arm because toy sales and toy products are seen as a liability for a company that's going that's being sold. So it's all very interesting to see how this unfolds. I wish I understood the toy market and the toy industry better than I actually do. It's one of those things that I have asked around, but the problem is when you ask around and you're a podcast, people think you're trying to get inside tea or trying to be like, aha, gotcha. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm genuinely curious how a lot of this works on the back end. But you know, I've been through corporate layoffs myself. There, a lot of good people lose their jobs. And I want to say, I think there's a lot of good support coming from the Hasbro team. Dan Young tweeted, going to pray and try to stay positive amidst all of the heavy news from yesterday. I think that's wonderful. It's so hard, especially if you are a public-facing employee in the way the Hasbro team is. It's so important to send out support out there because a lot of us love this community. We love Hasbro. I don't want Hasbro to go away. Again, as I've said, Hasbro has been so good to Marvel Legends fans. It's been a long road since that first Annihilus wave to where we're at 
today getting a live stream dedicated to the 50th anniversary of Wolverine figures. It is a long journey that Hasbro has had, and they have been really, really good to their fans. They have prioritized their fans. One final thing I am going to read is from Steve Evans, who is a product design and director for Marvel. And he posted on Instagram, I just wanted to express my personal appreciation for the caring messages sent regarding the recent news about the announced headcount reduction and Hasbro. While this isn't my first rodeo, it's always a challenging and thoughtful time. Heart emoji, heart hands emoji, my Hasbro fam. Yeah, I mean, this is just the nature of when you work in big corporations that have peaks and valleys. Layoffs, unfortunately, are part of that. And it's so disheartening. It's, it's one of the reasons why I went off and started auctioneering full time because I don't want to be at the mercy of some kind of corporate decision to reduce headcount. It's just so sterile and tough to be like that. I, I remember, so I've worked in book publishing and you know we, we went through the transition from print to digital, from physical books to Kindle. And you know when Amazon really started taking off, seeing borders go away, and I saw folks that were in their mid-50s, early 60s, getting laid off at a company they had been at for almost 30 years. And I just remember thinking, I don't want to ever be in that position. These corporations will reduce headcount and not think about the employees that have dedicated their lives to. So my heart really does go out to the Hasbro company and the familia there. I have to tell you, they have, again, just to reiterate that point, this is upsetting news. I really hope that this is just temporary, that we will see Hasbro rise again because they are a phenomenal company. I have enjoyed so many of their products. Please, if you follow any of the Marvel Legends team on Instagram, hit them up. You know, when we're part of this fan community, we love to like dissect everything we love to speculate we want to be like oh is a has lab giant man not going to make its numbers oh hasbro's out of touch they don't know it, it is all part of the ecosystem of being a part of the youtube scene the social media scene when it comes to marvel legends but at the end of the day no one wants to see these companies go away i want the marvel legends of tomorrow i want marvel legends of characters who haven't even been created yet i want marvel legends of characters that still have other costumes that they haven't done yet i want them all so while it's always fun to speculate and break down what's going on i don't want any of these companies to go anywhere so anyways amelia that is our hasbro news of the day Send us a DM at Power of X-Men with your thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. What are your thoughts on everything that's going on with Hasbro? But also, let's try to have some fun and think about Thursday and what legends we could possibly see. Drop it right down there, Familia, and we'll see you next time.